If you enjoy watching newbie Cat D Zwift riders make huge blunders in races, then stick around as you're gonna love this video. A couple of days ago, I raced in the Zwift Insider Tiny Race Series. So this week's video is a four-parter. Four races for the price of one vid. The Zwift Insider Tiny Race is a series of short races, one directly after another. So you have seven to 12 minutes to complete each race. Then you immediately join the pen for the next one. This one is an interesting one for me. It's fast, aggressive, and exhausting. I haven't done these short ones uh, before. So race one is the Volcano Circuit, one lap at 6.9 kilometers. There are two Aero Boost power-ups available in this race. Race two is only one lap around the Duchy Estate, 4.7 kilometers with one Feather power-up. And then race three is the Bell Lap, three laps around the course covering 5.7 kilometers with two Anvil power-ups available. And in the last race, race four is Mechile, 6.6 kilometers and ends at the top of a gnarly dirt climb. Right, okay. So today is the hottest day of the year so far in 2023. It's nearly four o'clock and it's just gone 30 degrees Celsius. Um, I've had a delivery. I'm gonna open this quickly and I'll show you what we've got. So in the box, a fan. We've got a race that starts in 20 minutes. I'm gonna put my heart rate monitor on. So I'm in a rush because I've just got home from work and I've signed up to this race series, the series of of four short races. So the fan is a Vacmaster. I got it off the Watt Bike website. And then setting three. So this is what we've got rolling at the moment. I record on my laptop, I've got the fan, got my screen, got my phone, and we've got the, uh, the bike with my towel. So I now have a fan. So everyone commenting, I appreciate how bad I must have looked. Please give me a break. I've got a fan, so I've listened. Thank you. I also have some more good news. Um, I had a weigh-in yesterday and I've dropped another three pounds. So I've changed that already on Zwift. We're gonna go into the Zwift Insider Tiny Race 1 of 4. So they'll take about seven to 12 minutes to complete, probably 12 minutes for me. Uh, races are scheduled 15 minutes apart, so you can sign up and race all four for a splendid one hour workout. So that's what we're doing today. I'm racing all four races. So we've got just over five minutes of a warm up now. Um, and then I'll come back to you when we start the race. Race one starts fast. The leaves pack gets stretched out seconds after leaving the pen. And my inexperience left me pacing the chasing group. I've been watching a lot of Jake Sanderson videos recently as I'm learning the basics of racing. And one thing I've picked up from his awesome vids is do not do all the work when someone else can. Save energy from when you really need it. I've linked his channel in the description if you fancy watching some of his videos, they're really good. So with this in mind, I attempt to ride in the draft of the rider in the pink Tron bike and bridge over to the lead group with them. Okay, so I've just got a really, really quick interjection here. I've just finished editing the video and uh, I felt like I need to add something. I'm fully aware that I am riding a TT bike. I know this because on the back of my last video where I talked about drafting and pacing and sticking with groups, etc., etc., I got inundated with comments about the fact that the bike I was riding doesn't have any draft benefit because it's a TT bike. I didn't know this, um, which is why this video is called Blunder and Bust but I am aware of it now and future videos, I won't be riding a TT bike that has zero draft benefit. I've got a fan now, which is what probably 50% of my comments have been about, not having a fan. And I know about the bike and I've fixed it already. Um, it's just not fixed for this video. So I don't want to lose this group at the front. I'm going to see if I can bridge it with this guy with the aero boost. The only problem with this is we hit a short three or four percent heel at one minute 30 seconds and on hindsight i should have picked up the pace a bit and, and and put in a burst to catch the front group but i didn't and instead i get dropped 
The tactic was sound. I just needed a bit more experience to be able to pull it off. I found myself floundering in no man's land. I'm feeling it on this hill. I should really fight to get back in this group. Oh, I've caught myself completely in no man's land. I'm still pushing. Okay, I've dropped. I used the aero boost to get up with these two, just so as I'm not on my own. I can't do this on my own. For me, this was probably the best thing I did throughout all four of the races. Unfortunately for me, my complete lack of experience and an exhausted newbie brain means I made a couple of big mistakes at the end of this race, which annoyingly means I lose out on a better position. The first mistake I made was to use the aero boost, the second one I got, on the short incline at 723. I've since learned that this power up has little to no effect on climbs and I should have saved it for the sprint finish. The second mistake was a real blunder. I wasn't paying attention to the distance left of the finish line and I got my timings all wrong. At 11.24, a fourth rider joined the party and made a dash for the line. And instead of sprinting with him, I again forgot how close the line was and elected to surf his wheels. I'm gonna try and stick with them. I'm gonna drop the gears to spin my legs. I even dropped the gears to give my legs a break. And then at 60 meters from the line, I realized. Oh man, that's the finish line. I realized what I'm doing wrong. Damn it. What was I doing? Completely oblivious to the finish line. Oh man, 12 minutes 16. Oh, I messed that up a little bit at the end. I should have powered through there. I dropped back because I thought I was saving it for the line and it was the line. I messed that up big time there. Embarrassing. According to Zwift Power, I finished 30 out of 35. I averaged 2.0 watts per kilogram and 219 watts over the race. I peaked at 3.2 watts per kg for my 15 second burst. I joined the pen for race two with two minutes to go. That was tough going in that last one. I'm gonna try and get my breath back. I'm just annoyed at myself that I never powered through on the end there. I was holding it back because I thought I needed it for the finish line and it was the finish line. I didn't look rookie error, big time. But anyway, let's put that behind me and focus on this race. We've got a minute. The Dutchy Estate race is only 4.7 kilometers, the shortest of the four races. I know this one is going to be hard and fast. All right, let's give everyone a ride on. And now 30 seconds to go. Let's start pedaling. Gear 12. Let's try and get 300 watts. Try and stick with that lead group. <clears throat> My plan as always for the first 200 meters, get off the start line in excess of 300 watts and stick with the front riders. Do not get dropped on the start. Okay, 10 seconds. Here we go. Seven. Let's get it up, get the watts up, 300. I actually peak in excess of 400 watts and it doesn't get me anywhere near the front of the lead out. Painful. I'm at the back of the lead group and if I play my cards right, I might be able to surf those wheels. Okay, good. Got off that line a little bit better. Someone's gone blistering off at the front. It was a really fast pace, but the feeling of being part of the lead group was exhilarating. And for a brief moment, I felt like I was competing. Okay, I'm in the pack. Priority one achieved. Don't get dropped on the start line. Man, this pace is brutal. Then we hit the plus 6% hill, a long drawn out hill over a kilometre. I'm gonna get dropped here. 6% hill is not what I wanted now. I knew immediately I was being dropped. I just can't compete on these hills with these faster, lighter riders. Yeah, I've been dropped. God damn heels. A few videos ago, I made a video about my first month on Zwift. 
And one of my new rules in that was to learn the course in advance, have a recce race, or at least check it out on Zwift Insider. On hindsight, I should have known this hill was there and I should have powered into it ahead of the lead pack. But instead, I continue the slow slog whilst watching the pack slowly move away from me. I burned too much on that start line, just to keep with the lead group. With a steady succession of stragglers slowly passing me, dropping me further and further back. So that lead group, has been completely strung out on that first six, seven percent hill. That was brutal. That pace was too fast off the start line. I finally get to the top in 30th place and maintain the pace with my fellow victims. Okay, here we go. Let's get a power up. What power up have we got? Featherlight. Okay. There's not much else to report on this race except that I used my feather power up in the wrong place. Okay, we've got that monster hill. And I should have saved it for the second attempt. Yeah, fucking hill. On that slow, long one kilometer hill. I've got nothing on this hill, nothing. Why didn't I save my feather light for this? I have a quick burst for the finish line and finish 28th out of 32 Cat D riders. Okay, that's that race done. I averaged 1.9 watts per kg and 212 watts over the whole race. You see, I would say that if I raced race one and race two again now, I think I'll do a lot better. Race one, definitely, because of the series of blunders at the end. Just knowing the course now makes a huge difference. If there's one message that comes out of this video, it's got to be learn the course. Know where the different sections are, know where I need to power into the hills, and know where the best points are to drop the power-ups. Race three was the bell lap. I learned from the first two races that 300 plus watts wasn't enough to stick to the front of the lead out. So I dropped 500 plus. There we go. But struggled to maintain the pace of the lead riders. I'm now feeling pretty cooked after the first two races. They've gone hard already. Jesus, give everyone, everyone a ride on. They've gone. Three laps of this course, and it has the three rolling slopes that lead into a short half K incline. This one's going to be brutal. They've gone. The power up on this course is the anvil, and it's apparent I had no idea what this did. It's the first time I'd encountered it. Now, I think the power up on this one is the anvil. And I'm not sure what the anvil does. I think it stops other people drafting off you, but that could be the burrito. I'm not sure. I know what it does now. I googled it. Watching this back, I probably should have Googled it before the race. The pace is really fast in this race, really fast. And as we hit the rollers, I've allowed the start line stragglers to pass me, dropping me even further back. So this is the opposite way to the downtown Dolphin. Okay. Just before the end of lap one, I pick up with two other riders and attempt to use them to push on. I can see a group has formed 10 seconds ahead. Okay, so we've picked up an anvil. I don't know what it does. But I'm going to do what I normally do and wait to see where other people use it. I get the anvil power up and probably spend too much time and copy thinking about what to do with it than focusing on pushing on, which is the story of my Zwift life so far, to catch the group in front. I hit the rollers again for the second time and instead of steaming into them, building momentum over the other two riders I'm with, I waffle on about the bloody anvil, distracting myself. This means I lose momentum. These guys have dropped me on those hills and the other two riders managed to drop me. So. I'm gonna try and catch them now. So I used the anvil, only because I was coming up to the line and I get another one, but I don't know what it did. With absolutely no idea what the anvil did, I dropped it just before the start of the third lap. It made me heavier. It's supposed to be used on downhill sections. I'm completely found myself on my own in no man's land. Using it on the flat. Messed that up big time. I just sabotaged myself like I need to be heavier. I've been annihilated on these hills. Oh my God, what a race. I push onto the finish line. Go past me. Having again not attacked the rollers, I then get caught by the group behind. Drop the anvil. I've stuck with this group. And they're going so fast. I then again drop the anvil, my second power up, whilst trying to chase this group to the line. What was I doing? So obviously, I wasn't beating them to the line, being heavier than I actually am. One rider tried to beat me on the line, and we had a mini battle. 
She didn't beat me. It looked like I'd just beat them over the line and looking on Zwift Power, I did just by a, a fraction. I finished 27th out of 29 Cat D riders and I averaged 1.9 watts per kg and 211 watts over the race. My heart rate was now peaking at 183 BPM. This was a tough race, but nothing compared to the shit show that's about to come. Okay, here we go. I've turned the fan up as well. They went mental off the line in the last race. I see riders chatting about gravel bikes in the group chat. Having now completed the course, I can see why. This race is the Mech Isle, 6.6 kilometers and ends at the top of a gnarly dirt climb. This was a brutal race to finish this short series on. I dropped nearly 500 watts to get off the start line. Right, we're at the front. Priority one, tick, never get dropped on the line. And very quickly hit the sandy gravel trail and I could feel the resistance on the legs. I was quite impressed by it to be fair. We race it on gravel. I can feel the resistance. On hindsight, I probably should have changed my bike, but I had no real idea about this, so I powered on. This race was just a suck it and see mentality. Get through it and learn what I can. I knew it had a monster hill climb on it. 0.8 kilometers peaking at 7%. After racing the previous three races, this was really hard. The race line was also at the top of the second climb. Brutal. And at the end of this brutal second climb, I got pipped to the line as well. All I had in me was to finish the race. I just didn't have a sprint. I finished 27th out of 28 Cat D riders, and I averaged 1.9 watts per kg and 195 watts overall. Absolutely brutal, and by far my worst race out of all four. I'm done. I am done as the best thing to come out of these four races was the experience positions and points can't replace the knowledge gained by making these blunders and noob mistakes nothing is a replacement for experience trial and error i've had a few comments now from newbie zwifters who've been using zwift for training plans and general workouts who want to start racing but find the whole idea of competing against obviously better riders intimidating or nerve-wracking, I'd say to these riders, take the plunge, give it a go, you might surprise yourself. It surprised me how addictive this swift racing is. All I want to do now is get better and in my experience the best way to do that is by diving in the deep end head first. Make mistakes, learn, accept the wooden spoon in races and gradually improve. You're beating everyone else still sat on the sofa. So thanks for continuing to watch my Swift videos. I'm enjoying making them. And if they continue to get the interest they are at the moment, then they're worth the time and effort making them. Next week, I have a special video for you. This weekend, I'm out of the garage and in the real world, running the London Ultra 55. That's 55K through London from Woolwich to Richmond Park. And I'm running it as a training run in prep for the big one in September. If you want to know more about that race, watch my recent training update video. Next week's video should make for a great video, so please don't forget to subscribe. See you then.